Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. The face of downtown is changing by the day, becoming more vibrant as the seasons pass. Good morning, I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for joining us for Chronicle. Several major projects have taken shape, creating a hub of activity, celebrating community through recreation, music, arts, history, and science. So today we're taking you back in time to the museum that honors the traditions this town was built on. Chronicle gets an exclusive look at a restoration project ensuring the Durham Museum will be around to tell our stories to future generations. Plus, the redesign of the riverfront. What's next for Heartland of America Park and Lewis and Clark Landing? And Omaha's music scene hits a new high note. Steelhouse Omaha set to open in May, and we're gonna take you inside for a preview before they open their doors to a sellout crowd. But we begin with a massive interactive STEM learning center that puts you in the driver's seat. We're just days from the Kiewit Luminarium's grand opening along the riverfront. Chronicle's Jack Keenan gives us a sneak peek at the Luminarium's unique formula that will bring all walks of life together, inspire future leaders, and satisfy the forever curious. At the heart of the experiences here is the notion that it's the learner should drive. Along the river's edge at Lewis and Clark, more than 100 hands-on exhibits await your exploration this April. The Luminary is going to be a place for everyone, all ages, identities, and backgrounds to come and explore the astonishing phenomena that shape our world, our communities, and ourselves. Not just a destination for science and math lovers. You just have to come see it for yourself. The 82,000 square foot space hopes to informally immerse you in a hands-on, thought-provoking, and inspiring world. The real thing we're trying to do is to get people to gain confidence as learners and explorers. And so we use the science as a vehicle for that, but it's really about something even deeper. Alongside for the ride, essential staff known as Luminators, tasked with ensuring a rich visitor experience. Just trying to make people feel um, like they're represented when they come. People that come in that look like me, you know. Uh, when I was a kid, there wasn't really a lot of places built like this in Omaha. The Illuminator program gives more than 50 youth and young adults work experience and peer-to-peer -peer mentorship no matter what they want to do in life. You don't have to be a science major, you don't have to be in school. I just want when you come inside that you have that excitement that we can give to guests, that we can give to the team. In my school, I've been telling people about it. So for me, it's like young generations come and do something different because this is something new in Omaha and I'm so excited about it. Illuminators will be there if you have questions. My favorite section of the Luminarium is Make It Count, and it focuses on math and numbers and finances and everything like that. And they hope to encourage you to start a new adventure. Don't be scared to learn about science. Even if you don't know anything, just come and enjoy. You're going to learn something. Everything here is in Spanish and English, so don't be afraid. The Luminarium is a place for everyone, all ages, identities, and backgrounds. When we think about diversity, it's not just about ethnicity, it's about you know accessibility, um, about knowledge. We have some people who know nothing about STEM, and we have some who know a lot. A hub for the curious. I'm really excited for it to open up. You know, um, It's a really good addition to Omaha. Providing limitless potential. Making it to the curriculum, who knows, it might be something that they actually start adding to some of these schools while enriching our sense of community. We're in an amazing world filled with beauty and curiosity, and it's not something we're serving up, it's something we're making together. And the more you explore, the more questions to discover as well. Thanks to Jack Keenan for that report. Joining us now for a deeper dive into the Luminarium is CEO Silva Raker. So much, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Thanks First for off, having me. I, you bet. I want to ask, what's the price tag of the Luminarium? I've read somewhere around 100 mil. Uh, it's, I think it was 101 mil, um, okay. and we actually raised a bit more than that. Oh, um, good. And, and, and I'll wait for your next question, but it was a heritage project here in Omaha, and all the money was raised privately. That's what um, I was going to ask you. So right. there's, there's any public dollars on the table for this, any tax dollars? No, no public dollars or tax dollars, although we are on city land. Right, so. right. You know, um, let's talk some programming. The sure. idea is that the Luminarium will spark a new way of learning. For people, right? So they, they may not respond to traditional ways of learning. Tell me how, how does that work? 
So we actually all learn differently, mm -hmm. right? So person to person, but also depending on where we are and what our mood is. And so people think school is the only place we learn. And we do learn in school, but mm -hmm. we also learn just being out in the world. We learn reading. Um, and it turns out school isn't always the best place to, for people to learn certain kinds of concepts. So we know math, science, engineering. Um, there are large numbers of people who struggle with those subjects in school. And, and I think there are many wonderful teachers working away at that, but there are some limitations. So one of our goals is to be a resource, a supplement for educators and for all kinds of learners, mm -hmm. uh, including the neurodiverse, including people from backgrounds who may be really underrepresented in STEM-related fields or just in museums in general, and be a place where you're actually coming to play and discover. Um, and in doing so, you're learning, but you, you, know, you may not realize it. it and you're right. not necessarily explicitly coming for that. You're just, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Right. And, and, uh, and also a place where you can, you can um, socialize. So part of that is, is learning socially as well. It's sneaky, sneaky educating, it's isn't it? It's yeah. a little sneaky. <laughs> I, lo I love it. I, I used to do that with my kids as well. You know, Don't let them know they're learning, but to teach them. Absolutely. You said the neurodiverse. You know, explain how, that, how you can help them. Well, our experiences, first of all, are they're interactive um, experiences and they're mostly real natural phenomena. So it's taking a piece of nature, it's framing it up in a way where you can ask and answer your own questions. It, and that sounds kind of heady. Hmm. It, it might be something like a beam of light that you can manipulate and you can notice these different phenomena, some of which might be really beautiful or just surprising. Right. And, and then you can, you can sort of follow your own questions into the investigation of that. And it's, it turns out to have um, that kind of approach to learning, the learner-centric pedagogy. Okay. Is, it's designed in a way, whether you're nine years old or 90 years old, whether you're somebody who thinks you hate science, and we kind of especially love those people. Right, um, <laughs> absolutely. Or you're, a P, or you're a Nobel laureate. Um, there are points of access for you. And there are no, there's no one answer. It's an open-ended experience. Right. You actually uh, came here from San Francisco. There's a very famous exploratorium there, uh, similar. Are there similarities between what the luminarium is going to be like to the exploratorium, or are there differences? They're both. The exploratorium is, is and I did come from the exploratorium after 11 years there, and it's right. widely considered to be you know, the best or one of the very best mm -hmm. Um, informal science learning institutions in the world. Uh, and so the folks at the Exploratorium, um, myself included until a couple of years ago, um, have worked not only in San Francisco, but around the world to kind of uh, work with communities, develop programs, design exhibits, and make this kind of learning accessible to all sorts of people and to continue learning how to mm -hmm. do it better in the process. So the Exploratorium has been designed, developed, planned, um, programmed, and and really um, handed off very recently here in Omaha, but, but all of that early design work and development work mm -hmm. was done by the Exploratorium. And we have an ongoing relationship. So um, the Exploratorium also worked diligently to connect with the community here. We have a wonderful community advisory group that formed two and a half years ago that is people from everywhere from all parts of Omaha, rural Iowa, um, really a diverse group of folks who've been heavily engaged. and. Um, and and they, the Explore Time, plus those folks locally, plus about 200 other local people who have contributed content uh, or perspective have been involved in the development. So it's heavily connected mm -hmm. to the Explore Time, but it's also uniquely of this place and this moment. You, know, you talked with Jack Keenan, and both he and I have been wondering, you know, if you're talking about people from all walks of life can come and learn, uh, whether they know they're learning or not, but they're learning, what, is, what does this mean down the road? I and mean, what's the dream, what's the goal to have for the community? A, a couple of things. One, for the individual learner, it's as much about unlocking a sense of agency, the sense that you can understand the world, you can explore the world. Um, and it, it's really about creating a disposition for being an engaged citizen, for, being, um, for feeling like you have the ability to explore and understand. Right. Um, as a community, it's, about, it's really about connecting and engaging the whole community. And, and that's a challenge. Museums, if, if you look locally, nationally, they're disproportionately certain kinds of folks who are coming into museums, right? They tend to be affluent, mm -hmm. relatively affluent, relatively educated, and mostly white, right? So w the folks who had the vision to create this place and, and contributed all those dollars, right, understand that workforce um, is, is probably one of the limiting 
one mm -hmm. of the big constraints for growth and prosperity in this region and many others. And the idea that um, diverse workforce development is not only a way to, to address that from a pure workforce, but to also build a stronger team by incorporating all parts of the community is, right. is really behind this. And, and our hypothesis is that it's workforce development sounds like job training, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna go learn mm -hmm. this sure. skill. But we, it's really about identity. It, uh, and, and, and people will talk about price, or, but it's really about, do I feel like I belong here? Is this place for me? Is there anyone in my family that ever had a, went to a place mm -hmm. like this and enjoyed it? Or do I, do I see anyone here that looks like me? Is the content relevant? So I think the Luminarium has an amazing opportunity in this wonderfully diverse place, um, the greater Omaha metro. Right. to engage the community and, and be a place that's relevant and engaging for all. So. It's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to going there myself. All right, yeah. Sylvie, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you.